The other day, a good friend of mine who's a very talented artist, his name's Justin Jones, you can find him on Dribbble, uh, sent me a bit of inspiration here that he found of a uh, rebrand of the Sydney Opera House. And I looked at this, and I especially looked at the H, and I said, you know, I feel like Sketch can do that, um, and it won't even be hard. So <laughs> I want to show you guys how to achieve this effect in Sketch in very, very few steps so that you can blow the minds of people who are looking over your shoulder by showing them how quickly you can do something that dimensional. So I'm going to grab the text tool here, and I'm going to click and type an H, which went way up here. I'm going to hit Escape so that I can grab it. And uh, I happen to be using this uh, Helvetica Noia LT standard uh, at a heavy weight. You can use whatever font you want, but you want it to be something uh, big and fat. And now that I've got my big fat H, I'm going to hit Shift Command O, and that's going to convert this into outlines. It becomes a shape instead of being uh, text, because what I'm about to do next, I need it to be a shape and not text. Now I'm going to hit Command D for duplicate. Lots of shortcuts here, but you want to be able to pump this out fast to impress your colleagues, right? So Command D gives me a duplicate on top of the original. You can see on the Layers panel here. And then I'm going to go and create an oval. So I'm going to press O for oval. And I'm going to click and drag and create an oval that goes from this point on the H up here to this point on the H to this point to this point. So the oval is going to touch all of those points there. And you can hold the space bar to slide it over if you want to get it wider. Um, and you can kind of finesse this as you go along. But really, you just want to hit all of those points there. So I'm going to finesse this and I'm going to need it to be wider than that. So let me play a little bit. And it's a little tricky to get it in the right spot. You may even want to just drop it and then go and reposition it because uh, it can be tricky. Uh, I think I'm thinking about this too much. There we go. That's about good. <laughs> so I'm going to drop the oval there. Uh, usually I'm a little quicker than that, but it is the morning and my mind is slow. So now that I've got my oval created, I'm going to select that and the H that's behind it, and I'm going to choose Intersect from the Boolean operations on the menu at the top of the screen. So now I've got an H you can actually see over here on the Layers panel. I've got an H that is cropped by that oval. And now that I've got that created, I'm going to go over to Fills, and I'm going to add a fill here, and I'm going to make that fill a gradient. And you can see that this effect is already starting to take place. Uh, and I'm going to rotate that gradient to the right. Uh, you could also angle it a little bit, so that way it's uh, darker at the top. In this case, since it's pushed in, that gradient should be darker at the top than it is at the bottom. Gives us a direction of our light source, too. Uh, and then we're going to select this. Uh, specifically, we're going to copy the style of this. I'm going to do Option-Command-C for Copy Style. And I'm going to click on the H below it, and I'm going to do Option-Command-V for paste style. So it's like Command C and Command V, but you also hold Option, and it does the style instead of doing um, the object itself. So now that I've copied and pasted the style, I'm going to go back to my gradient here on the big H, and I'm going to rotate this uh, sort of 180. And uh, in doing that, I can still play with the directionality of this, and I can uh, sort of finesse it, but really you don't have to. I mean, uh, it depends on what a perfectionist you are. Uh, you could also do a radial gradient, and with a radial gradient you have a little bit more control. Um, in my case, this radial gradient is backwards, so you'd want the black to be on the inside and the white to be on the outside. Uh, they kind of did it like this, where there was a dark puff of light and then it was lighter at the top and the bottom. Um, you can do that same thing if you want to do a radial gradient. And then you could scale it up, make it softer or more harsh. Um, but it is that easy. So uh, let's do a speed run real quick. We'll run through it again. I'm going to delete this. So I'm going to do T for the type tool, click and do my capital H, uh, hit escape. I don't even know where it went. OK, it went up there. Here we go. And uh, another cool trick is if I click on this box and do Command-2, it'll zoom me into that box. So that's another cool trick uh, for repositioning real quick. So then I'm going to do Shift-Command-O to convert to outlines, Command-D to duplicate, O for oval. I'm going to create that oval. Hopefully I get it in position more quickly this time since it's a speed run. <laughs> there we go. Now I'm going to drop that oval in there, select the oval and the H behind it. I'm going to choose Intersect. I'm going to add a gradient fill. I'm going to rotate that gradient fill. I'm going to get off of the gradient panel. Option Command C to copy. Select the H. Option Command V to paste. And I'm going to go in and rotate that 
180 degrees. So that's pretty cool. People will look over your shoulder and think that you are the best with sketch and they will bow down to you, even though it's a really easy thing to do. But you're creating serious 3D dimensionality with very, very, very few steps. And part of the reason for that is as you click and add that gradient, uh, it adds a default gradient that is pretty appropriate in this case. It adds a black to white gradient that actually works really, really well. Uh, don't forget to start with light gray text too because it is going to apply that gradient on top of uh, whatever color you've established uh, before creating that gradient. So hopefully you guys like this tutorial. I've got more cool stuff coming soon. I'm going to put a big fat discount for you guys on my complete sketch course. Uh, if you want to learn Sketch 3 from A to Z, I have a Udemy course, and I'll put a big discount in the description below. So please subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll have more cool stuff coming soon.